In this video, we're going to continue to take a look at standard three um, that looks at these ideas of arc length, area, linear velocity, and angular velocity. Um, we're going to apply them to some more interesting problems. Um, but first, let's just kind of take an inventory of where we're at here. So remember the first formula that we learned about was this one, s is equal to r theta. And that applies to this idea of, let's say that I have this wedge of a circle, and I want to figure out what is the arc length that I've traveled if I know the radius of this circle, and I also know the angle that I have subtended, then this is the formula that gives that to me. Uh, and remember that one important thing about this theta we're talking about is that it must be in radians, right? Because remember, we defined a radian as the ratio of the arc length over the radius. All right, and then we also talked about how we can figure out the area of a sector like this, right? So it was one half theta r squared. And remember that that theta also has to be in radians. And then we uh, looked at these ideas of linear velocity and angular velocity. So the linear velocity is the arc length over time, okay? And so the idea is, you know, if I have a little dot right here, um, how fast does it move along this arc here, right? The distance covered per unit time, all right? But we can also talk about, instead of how fast this dot is moving, I can also talk about how fast this angle is changing. So that's what we would call angular velocity, and that is the angle subtended per unit time. So we have linear velocity, or linear speed if you'd like, and angular velocity. Okay, and then lastly we have the formula that uh, relates these two to each other. We can say that linear velocity is equal to the radius times our angular velocity. All right, so equipped with those uh, five formulas, uh, let's take a look at some problems. So in this one, it says the sprockets and chain of a bicycle are shown below. The pedal sprocket has a radius of four inches, the wheel sprocket has a radius of two inches, and the wheel has a radius of 13 inches. The cyclist, uh, uh, the cyclist pedals at 50 revolutions per minute find the speed of the bicycle. Okay, So um, let's just kind of mark in the picture what we know. They said that the pedal sprocket, that would be this guy, right, the blue, has a radius of 4 inches. Um, the wheel sprocket, which is just this little guy, the green part, has a radius of two inches. And then the wheel sprocket has a radius of 13 inches. Okay, so we're given that information. Um, and then uh, there, we're told that the cyclist pedals at 50 revolutions per minute and then they want us to find the speed of the bicycle. Okay, so what I'd like you to do here is um, first remember that you were asked two questions about a bicycle like, that looked like this um, in one of your homeworks. And so uh, it might be good to go back to that and remember what those two questions were because they're actually intended to help you with this problem. But I want you to pause for a moment and then see if you can figure out the answer to this question. Okay, so now we're back. Um, hopefully you've taken some time to think about it. Now what I want to do is, is give you a little hint if you're stuck. All right, so let's make sure we're on the same page as to what are they asking us to figure out and what is it right here that they've given us. 
So the speed of the bicycle, right? What, how does the speed of the bicycle relate to these ideas that we've come up with? Well, linear speed, right, which gives distance per time, that would be the actual speed you end up going. A way to think of it is if I put a little uh, bla uh, black dot of paint uh, on the tire here, right, and let's say that this, this black dot of paint would just perpetually stay wet, then the distance that it covers would be equivalent to the, the length of the, of the black line that it makes on the street, right? And that, that would, the, so the, in other words, the arc length that it covers would be equivalent to the length of that line. So when we're talking about how fast this bike is going, what we're talking about is the linear speed, right? The linear speed of the wheel. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it R for red, just to kind of color code it here. That's the thing that we're trying to figure out. Now, the 50 revolutions per minute, what's that all about? Well, revolutions is uh, rotations, right? So it's telling me how much rotation I'm doing per unit time. So that sounds like an angular velocity. And since we're talking about the pedal, that must be talking about the angular velocity of the pedal sprocket. So we'll call that omega b for blue, right, is going to be 50 revolutions per minute. All right, now at this point, what I would have you do after giving those two hints is go ahead and pause one more time and see if that helps you get going if you didn't uh, come up with the answer already. All right. Now, uh, in case um, in case you've uh, figured this out already completely, uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now uh, the, what the answer should be. So in the end, we should end up with a linear speed of 7.73 miles per hour. Okay, so, uh, so hopefully if you worked it all out, that's what you came to, but uh, let's talk about how we get there. So we have our angular velocity here. Now the first thing to understand is that because we're talking about angular and linear velocity, probably the ticket to this whole problem is this formula here, right? V equals R omega. Now one of the things to remember is just like in our formulas, if I go back a page, just like theta is always in radians, we also are going to want our angular speed, because it really involves this theta, to be in radians per unit time. Okay, So what I want to do, first of all, so we'll say radians over, and it doesn't really matter, but whatever your time unit happens to be. Okay, so we need that. And right now, 50 revolutions per minute is not in that form. So what I'm going to want to do right off the bat is make that conversion. So my angular velocity here, which is 50 revolutions per minute, I make my conversion, right, where I say I want revolutions to go away and I want radians to appear, so 2 pi radians. So that means that my angular velocity is 100 pi radians per minute. And even though radians isn't a real unit technically, it's not. It's kind of a unitless measure. Um, we're, we can still write it there, and I think it's helpful to continue to write it. All right. So this angular velocity here, we need to somehow get from information about the pedal sprocket to information about the wheel. Okay. So if we think this through here, um, the pedal sprocket and the wheel sprocket are connected by the chain, right? And so that means a particular link in the chain that goes around this and also goes around the green one is of course moving at a constant speed, right? If the, if the pedaling is constant. So what that means is that 
the blue and the green have to share a linear speed. They have to be the same because they're connected by the same chain. So what we can say here is that the green linear velocity has to equal the blue linear velocity. But that's really good news because if I know the blue angular velocity, I can figure out its linear velocity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say my linear velocity for blue is going to be 4 inches times 100 pi radians per minute, which is of course going to be 400 pi inches per minute. And notice I'm not in a hurry to pull out my calculator here. Let's keep things exact um, so that we don't end up having rounding upon rounding. And remember, you might say where the radians go, but remember it's unitless, right? So, uh, so we can just kind of drop it out when we are doing this kind of um, work with our formula. All right, so that is 400 pi inches per minute, but guess what? That is also the green linear velocity. Sorry, messed that up. Write it down here. So the green linear velocity is also equal to 400 pi inches per minute. So that's good. Green is definitely a lot closer. It's on the wheel, right? But that's not the same as the wheel itself. This is the wheel sprocket. But then this picture that we drew really does tell us where to go next because of the fact that the this wheel and the sprocket are connected, right? You can kind of imagine the spokes going out to the wheel. They have to be moving with the same angular velocity, right? So if you put a little dot here and you put a little dot out here, then as you go through a rotation, they both uh, finish one single rotation in the same amount of time. And so what we can say here is that the angular velocity for my wheel and the angular velocity for my uh, sprocket, which is the green one, have to be the same. But the good news is I can figure out the angular velocity for the green, right? Because I know it's linear velocity. We know that if v is equal to r omega, then it's also true that omega equals v divided by r. So we can just say 400 pi inches per minute divided by the radius of the green sprocket, which is 2 inches, right, which is going to be 400 pi inches per minute times the reciprocal, 1 over 2 inches. And so those inches cancel out, and we can also cancel out a little bit here. So this is going to be 200 pi. Minutes are still on the bottom, and it seems like nothing's on top, but again, this is an angular velocity, so really what's hiding out there is the radians. All right, so I know that, but guess what? We already discovered that that's the same as the angular velocity for the wheel, for the red part. So it's also 200 pi radians per minute. And so we can go ahead and come up with our linear velocity, right? So the linear velocity, which is what we're looking for of the wheel, is its radius, so 13 inches, times 200 pi radians per minute. So that's going to be 2600 pi inches per minute. All right, now the only thing about this that I don't love is that um, this is a speed, right? It should be something that I can actually picture in my mind. So 200 inches per minute uh, isn't the greatest. I think I'd much rather have that in miles per hour. So let's do that conversion. So inches um, 
first of all, let's get that into feet, right? So 12 inches, one foot, get those to cancel. And then we know there are 5,280 feet in one mile. And by the way, that's something that I would tell you in any kind of test question where this might come up. Um, so now we got miles on top, but now we have minutes on bottom. I really want hours, so let's put 60 minutes here, one hour on bottom, then our minutes cancel. And now we can finally pull out our calculator and do all that work, and that's when you get 7.73 miles per hour. So a tough question there, lots of moving parts to it. Um, but I wanted you to see how you, we can use these ideas in, to solve a pretty complex problem. All right, let's look at another example here. Uh, this one uh, is also a cool problem. It kind of tells us how some um, pretty big measurements can be taken even with uh, limited technology. So it says the Greek mathematician Aristosthenes uh, measured the circumference of the Earth um, from the following observations. Uh, he noticed that on a certain day the sun shone directly down a deep well in Syene. Um, at the same time, in Alexandria, 500 miles north on the same meridian, the rays of the sun shone at an angle of 7.2 degrees. Use this information to find the radius and circumference of the Earth. All right, so... The idea here is down here south, the light rays were just going directly into the well, and then somehow you had someone up in this other city in Alexandria um, on the same day measuring the light rays heading into a well there and saw that it was 7.2 degrees. All right, so what we know, right, is that this is 500 miles. So they're asking us to find the radius and circumference of the Earth. So they want to know, let's start with the radius, they want to know R, right? And what do they give us, right? Well, they give us S, which is 500 miles, and they also give us theta, right? 7.2 degrees. So if that's what's all involved, you can bet that this is a problem for this formula here, right? S equals R theta. Okay, but of course, what do we know about theta, right? We know that in order to use it in this formula, it needs to be in radians, right? So my first order of business here is to do a conversion into radians. Um, now, to do this conversion um, and be a little more fancy about it, but also keep things uh, exact, uh, I could get rid of this decimal point if I multiply the top and the bottom by 10, which I'll go ahead and do here. Oops, didn't want that. So I'm just going to go ahead and go times 10, times 10. So I'm multiplying on top and the bottom, so that's fine. So I have 72 pi over 1800, but then I can do some reducing here. Um, so it turns out that I can divide both 1800 and 72 by 72, and so I get one up here and 25 here. So in radians, this is pi over 25. All right, so now I can set this up. 500 is s is equal to r times pi over 25. So then I can multiply both sides by 25 over pi to get my r all by itself. So 25 over pi, 25 over pi. And so what do we get here? We get Two five zero zero uh, over pi is my radius. Okay, but what is that? Right, that's going to give me a radius of about three thousand 
979 miles. Okay, so that tells us the radius of the Earth. But then the circumference part, of course, we know the formula for circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r, so that would just be 2 pi times 12,500 over pi. So using the exact form of what I got for the radius. And so that gives me 25,000 miles. And this turns out to be a pretty, pretty close guess of uh, what the true circumference of the Earth is. All right, so this is another example where I'd have you look at this first, maybe, and you know, pause the video, and then see if you can figure out you know, what all is involved here. All right, so think about what are the necessary formulas and how are you going to use those to answer the question. All right, so what we have here is um, an example about the Space Needle. Okay, so you know the Space Needle uh, rotates um, slowly. And so uh, it does one revolution every 47 minutes. And A asks, through how many radians does it turn in 100 minutes? All right, so... Let's think about what's being asked for here. Through how many radians? Okay, well, radians is a measure of, of course, an angle, right? So we know that we want to figure out uh, what the angle actually is. Now, what kind of information did they give us, right? One revolution per 47 minutes. What type? of a piece of information is that? Well, if they're giving us information about rotation and time, let's understand that they're really giving us this, right? They're really giving us an angular velocity. So we have angular velocity, we have theta that we want to know, so it looks like that's going to go back to this formula here, right? The uh, our basic definition formula of what angular velocity is all about. All right, so what we know here is that omega is equal to theta over t, right? But guess what? We know t and we know omega. Now, at first, this might be kind of awkward to write, right? We know this is supposed to be in uh, in uh, radians per minute, and right now it's in revolutions per 47 minutes. So let's let's kind of clean this up a little bit. One revolution per 47 minutes. Oops, minutes. Okay. But we need it in radians, right? But we've done this before. 2 pi radians for every one revolution. And so understand that you do not need to be in a hurry to do any kind of calculator work here. You have 2 pi on top, 47 on bottom, just leave it like that. So it's 2 pi over 47 radians per minute. You can just leave it just like that. And so we can take our formula here, and I've done a poor job with uh, using the space on my paper. Let's just do it over here. So I'm going to take this formula and I'm going to plug in 2 pi over 47 radians per minute. That's going to be equal to theta, which I'm trying to figure out, over 100 minutes. right? And so I know how to get rid of my 100. I'm going to Multiply by 100 minutes here. Multiply by 100 minutes here. And so my answer in exact form would be 200 pi over 47 radians, right? Notice the minutes canceled out, right? So just radians. But of course, I can get a, an approximation for that. So when I plug that in the calculator, I get about... 13.37 
radiance. All right, so there's my answer <laughs> to this way up here. All right, now part B asks, how long does it take the restaurant to rotate through four radians? Okay, how long does it take to rotate through four radians? So here we're still using this formula, right? We're still using omega equals theta over t, but this time, this is what they're asking us for, and we know this, and the space needle is still moving at the same speed, so we know that. So this is going to be 2 pi over 47 is our omega equals 4 over t. And I know that I can multiply by t on both sides to get it out of the denominator. So this will be t times 2 pi over 47 is equal to 4. But then to get t by itself, of course, if we've got a fraction on the left side, we can isolate it by multiplying by the reciprocal, right? 47 over 2 pi. So this is times 47 over 2 pi. So we get that t, multiplying this out, uh, is approximately 29.9 minutes. Now one thing to notice in my work here is that um, over here I was really careful about my units. Over here I was a little bit more sloppy. Um, I'm not going to make a big deal out of uh, you know whether you uh, use units in every single part of it or not. I definitely want to see all the units anytime you're making a direct conversion. Um, whether putting units in an algebra problem helps you or hurts you uh, is a decision you can make for yourself. Um, obviously this is a lot cleaner, but then this kind of gives you confirmation that you've done things correctly because you end up with the units you want at the end. All right, and then part C, how far does a person sitting by the window move in 100 minutes if the radius of the restaurant is uh, 21 meters? Okay, so how far does a person sitting there move in 100 minutes? So now we're kind of going back to part A, right? So the time from part A, T from A, and now they're giving us a radius, and they're saying how far, right? So how far should make us think of arc length here, right? And we know that arc length is r times theta, all right? So do we, do we know r? Well, of course, they just said it to us right here, right? So that's 21 meters. Do we know theta? Well, yes, we do, okay? We solved for theta in part A, right, when we went for 100 minutes. So, of course, I'm going to pick the exact version rather than the approximate. So I'd put 200 pi over 47 radians. And remember, radians are really unitless, so they kind of just go away. So when I multiply all that out, I get 280.8 seven meters. That's how far they're going to move in 100 minutes uh, if the restaurant has a 21 meter radius. All right, so one last uh, problem here. Um, this one's a, a really pretty interesting one too. Um, so your car speedometer is ge geared to accurately give your speed using a certain tire size. Um, if you have 15 inch diameter wheels, just the, the metal part, and 4.6 inch tires, uh, the rubber part. Now A asks, if your car's instruments are properly calibrated, how many times should your tire rotate per second if you're traveling 35 miles per hour? Okay, and really this is kind of a question about how your speedometer works. So your speedometer is sensing the rotation um, that you're doing, and based upon that rotation and its you know knowledge, I guess, of the 
of the tire size uh, or the, 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 the wheel size, it's able to then calculate the speed you're actually traveling. So what's going on here is we have again this relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity, right? The car senses the angular velocity, does this computation, and then computes uh, the linear velocity. All right, so how many times should your tire rotate per second? So if they're asking us how many times we should rotate per second, what is that, right? Okay, and again, before we get too far into this, this is a great problem for you to pause, think about yourself, um, and try to work it out with, without direction from me first. All right, so what is it that we have here when we're uh, when it says how many times should your tire rotate per second? Okay, that's asking you about your angular velocity, right? So this is what they're asking for. This, well, maybe we have to do a little bit of work for it, but we really do know enough information for this. And this, of course, we know is 35 miles per hour. All right, so so let's let's work on R first. Okay, so we've got the wheel, right? So here's our wheel, and they told us. That it's 15 inches, okay? But then, of course, that's just the that's just the wheel part. Let's see, how, I'm not very good at drawing on this thing, so sorry about that. But but then we got our tire, right? So we got that part that is well to think about, and this is definitely not to scale, so I apologize. Um, but the tire part is then 4.6 inches, right? So we know it's. 4.6 inches here. All right. So, of course, what's what we need is the R for the whole thing, right? So we need from the center all the way out here. So, of course, if the diameter is 15, then this part here that goes from here to here is half of that, right? So 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 inches. So the R that we're interested in, the R that that they have is it's 7.5 plus 4.6, which is 12.1 inches. All right, so we know that we've got our radius in inches, but look, we've got our linear velocity in miles per hour, right? And it's always good to think about what units do we eventually want to get to, right? We want to get to rotations, right? Rotations, and what's a rotation? It's a revolution, so we want to get in revolutions per second eventually. All right, so that means I would kind of like, instead of hours, to have seconds here. And you know what? Instead of miles, right? If I want revolutions, then that means all these length measurements are going to have to go away. So I would rather have uh, inches here so that it ends up matching the inches I have in my radius. So I would really like this to be inches. So inches per second would be a better way to represent my uh, linear velocity. So let's start with that. So we've got our 35 miles per hour and we are going to convert to inches per second so we do our conversion factor here right we want miles to go away so I put one mile on bottom 5,280 feet on top my miles cancel but of course I didn't want feet I wanted inches so one foot on bottom and that's equivalent to 12 inches up on top. All right, so now I've got the length measurement that I want, but then I also need to have my hours change to seconds. So I can put one hour on top so that 
those can cancel, and one hour is the same as 60 minutes. And then I can put one minute on top, which is the same as 60 seconds. All right, and then uh, might as well see if we can do some nice canceling. Some of these numbers look rather convenient to me. So I'm grabbing a different uh, color here. So uh, one thing is you can always, you know, two numbers both end in zero, you can definitely divide by 10, right? So that can be 528 and that can be six. And then if I've got six, it's real easy to just divide 12 by six to make two and six by six to make one. Um, hey, this ends in a five, this ends in a zero, so we can divide by five. 60 divided by five is 12. 35 divided by five is seven. Um, and I'll bet you that uh, 528 can be divided by 12. So let's see, 528 divided by 12, that's 44. 12 divided by 12 is one. So this is pretty nice. It uh, just turns into seven uh, times 44 times two. Um, so that's gonna give me, go back to the same color that I had before there. So that's going to give me 616, and what is what am I left with on top? Inches per second. All right, and now I know that if I go back to this formula here, right, my angular velocity, if I divide both sides of this formula by r, is going to be v over r, right? But now I have v, and I have it expressed in the units that I want divided by 12.1 inches. And that of course can be 616 inches per second times one over 12.1 inches. My inches cancel out nicely. And this is good, right? Because this is gonna be an angular velocity. And so when, that, when those units go away on top, we know that that means it is radians per second. And we're almost there, it's just that, what do they want? They wanted how many times it rotated per second. So remember that meant revolutions per second. So I just do one last conversion, and I know that two pi radians is equivalent to one revolution. So this will be 616 over 24.2 pi revolutions per second. And of course, now it's appropriate to get a nice approximation for it. So that should give me 8.1 revolutions per second. Now we should think about the reasonableness of this. So just, you know, imagine a car going 35 miles per hour. Does it seem like it's reasonable that it does about eight rotations per second? You know, that tire is moving pretty fast. So I would say, yes, we, we, we do have a reasonable answer here. All right, uh, last example here. Um, so it says your car's uh, speedometer is geared to accurately give your speed using a certain tire size, right? So we kind of talked about the beginning where the, tire, uh, the car thinks you have a certain size tire on, takes that angular uh, velocity that it senses and then converts that over to a linear velocity to tell you how fast you're going. All right. So part B says you buy new 6.3 inch tires but do not have your speedometer recalibrated. You drive at a constant speed of 50 miles per hour according to your car speedometer. However, a police officer stops you and claims that you were speeding. How fast did the radar gun clock you moving? Right, so the idea here is you were actually moving faster than what your speedometer said because you never had it recalibrated for your new tire size. So I want you to think about the answer to this question. And actually, the answer is can become uh, can be come by pretty simply. There doesn't have to be a lot of mathematics involved, but it involves one key insight. So think about that for a little bit before you um, move on with this problem on the video. 
Okay, so the key piece of insight here is to think about what is the same between what your car thinks or senses and reality. All right, definitely our car, we'll call it the speedometer, you know, the, the speedometer on the car believes you're going 50 miles per hour, right? Uh, they're asking us how far we are actually going, so we'll say the actual is, well, we don't know, something different than 50 miles per hour. Um, the radii are different, right? The speedometer thinks that you still got these tires on, right? So it thinks you've got the 7.5 inch tires, uh, the 7.5 inch wheels plus the 4.6 inch tires uh, to make 12.1 inch radius. That's what it thinks, right? Oops, inch. Um, now the actual radius we know is different, right? So the actual radius is based on the 6.3, so it's 7.5 plus 6.3 instead, which is going to give me 13.8. So the actual radius is 13.8 inches. Okay, so the we have V, we have R, and so what should we be thinking about? Probably this formula here, right? Since we know V and R, so omega. So how do the angular velocity of the speedometer and the actual angular velocity compare? Well, the answer is they're equal, right? The car can't truly senses how many rotations you've done per unit time. So that is the same as reality. The problem is it's basing that, taking that information and basing the speed on a false radius. So if these two are equal, then let's think about what the angular speed is. Taking this formula, as we've done before, we can divide by r on both sides and get the angular velocity. So that must mean the velocity of the speedometer divided by the radius of the speedometer should be still equal to the actual linear velocity divided by the actual radius. And we know three of these four things, so that gives us a nice little proportion to solve. So I could do something like this, 50 over 12.1 is equal to x, right, the actual velocity, over 13.8. And solving for x is pretty easy here. And so when I do that computation, what I get is about 57. So 57.0 miles per hour. So what's going on here is if you buy bigger tires and you just pay attention to what your speedometer says if the if they haven't been recalibrated, then you're actually going faster than what your speedometer has said.